Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another Imperator video. So last night I recorded a quick video about a Twitter poll that Johan had created and then he posted on the forums um, just to go over some of his thoughts. And now we have this. This is very hot news, it's three minutes ago. So let's go through this together. Hi everyone, let's continue talking about currencies and how to balance games, and Imperator in particular. So the design we've been working on right now have been to remove the four types of monarch power from the game and replace their costs with other impacts and also introduce a new currency which we call political influence. This is huge. This is a radical redesign of the game. I, I can basically take the script that I was writing uh, for my video on monarch power and, and why it's bad and just throw it out the window. I could burn it. It's useless now. Okay, let's get let's continue reading and then we'll talk about it. Political influence is gained by how loyal your characters in your government is. So that if all eight are 100% loyal, you gain maximum amount. And if all are 0% loyal, you gain nothing. Then of course there are other aspects that impact how much influence you get. If your co-ruler is disloyal or if you're in a deficit, you'll get far less. This will make it not just an easy choice of who to pick for a government position by just picking whoever had the highest ability in the relevant field, but you also have to consider how loyal they are so you can do certain actions. Now of course, not everything has been changed from using monarch power, but only a few actions will be changed to use political influence, but the rest will be using tyranny, stability, aggressive expansion, gold, manpower, or war exhaustion. Okay, Quick, quickly going through this. So at, at the start, it's like, remove the monarch power from the game. This doesn't imply that its uses have been lessened. This implies that it's going to be gone entirely. Um, although he's now saying not everything has been changed from using monarch power. And only a few actions will be using political influence, which is fine because the rest using this. Unless he's kind of saying that tyranny, stability, a gold, manpower, more exhaustion are, are monarch powers. I don't agree that they are. Maybe it's like, not everything has been changed from monarch power to political influence. Some of the things are being changed from monarch power to tyranny, stability, aggressive expansion, gold, etc. Yeah, no, that makes more sense. I'm going to go with that suggestion. Um, but this is a little bit poorly worded, but that's fine. Some examples of price changes include the following. Getting an invention will now cost four months of income. Enacting laws costs some political influence, but also reduces stability by 25. Remember, stability is now going to be on a scale from 0 to 100. Uh, fabricating a claim costs some upfront aggressive expansion. I like that. Endorsing a party is merely a small hit on stability and tyranny. That's fine. Military traditions work entirely differently, in that you would unlock a new slot every 20 years. We talked about tying it to tech, but that would put us in the same situation as ideas were in EU4 that would hurt barbarians way too much. The 20, were, 20 year value may change as we keep testing the game though. Now while we have talked about some aspects being moved to, or, to being a nudge over time like stability and legitimacy, some aspects like promotion, assimilation and conversion of pops will still be instant as of now. Oh, we were so close. We were so close. It's simply not feasible to rework that and still have a patch out in a reasonable time frame. It really is. You just remove the button. Just just remove the button. It's gone. Goodbye, button. See you later. Um, but having said that, him mentioning that it's not feasible to rework it um, in time implies that the intent is there to rework it in the future, which is a positive thing. So, cheers everyone, and tomorrow I'll go deep into more flavor and fun in the new dev diary. So, okay, there is, there is the, I don't know, what, what's he called this thread? A new currency design, okay. Wow, yeah, no, this is, this is a, I wouldn't call it a 180. Maybe like a 175, right? But this is a huge, huge change, and... I think the uh, the effects of this can't be understated. Right now, mana controls a lot. Like, if you're going to put a percentage on amount uh, on the amount of the game that mana controls, I mean, it's it's certainly above fifty percent. I don't know exactly what number I'd put on it, but it's it's huge. And to remove mana completely, man, this is 
Uh, a huge change. Yeah, I can't, I'm kind of stunned by it, to be honest. Um, to go into a little bit of what my video was going to be, because now I don't need to make the video, the video is completely obsolete. Thanks, Johan. That was going to be a popular video, I, I hope. Anyway, uh, so my plan was to say, these are the things that mana currently controls, and this is what it could be controlled by instead. Uh, you know, like using, uh, where is it, tyranny, stability, aggressive expansion, etc. Um, but my conclusion was going to be that I don't think monarch power can be taken out completely because I don't know a way of doing, for example, military traditions was one of the ones that I didn't really know how to impact in a positive way without, you know, using monarch power. I like his system though. That 20 year thing's pretty good. Um, so what I was going to use monarch power for was say that populations move around uh, automatically, right? So uh, say you've got a lot of slaves in your capital after a war, those slaves would slowly disperse throughout your nation. My suggestion was going to be that using monarch points, you would influence that spread to make it faster, or perhaps you wanted to make it slower, so you would have that option as well. Um, say you had the policy on for culture conversion, you could spend some magic mana points to make that culture conversion a bit faster. Um, yeah, so that was basically what I was going to uh, suggest. Um, that monarch points, instead of being a thing that you use to get a reward for, would be a thing that you could use to influence something that is already happening. It would just make it go faster or slower. Um, so that was going to be my suggestion, but well, we we have to wait and see how this is going to go. But honestly, I think this is a huge improvement, is in just phenomenal improvement. Um, yeah, this is going to make me enjoy the game a hell of a lot more. I'm very excited now. Can you tell? Uh, this is step one. This is step one on the road to making Imperator the best Paradox game. I'm sure of it. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. Um, yeah. Wow, just just huge changes. Uh, only one comment left, or so far. What's he said? Uh, now we're talking slightly whatever. Okay, so he's a happy camper too. Good, me too. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, tomorrow we'll have the uh, dev diary to go over. Um, in about an hour's time, I'm going to be streaming some Imperator multiplayer over on Twitch. So it'd be great if you would uh, come and uh, watch that. Um, but other than that, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode or video. Um, leave your comments. Yeah, I'd definitely like to hear your thoughts on this, like all of it. So put your thoughts down in the comment section below. Uh, you know, likes and all that are cool, I guess. And I'll see you next time. Bye.